the chair recognizes Mr. Sherman. Throughout the relevant period, we had two choices. Keep a force there, particularly with air power, and be prepared to incur modest casualties or pull out. The foreign policy establishment wanted to stay. The dissent cables said stay. The politicians promised the American people we would pull out, not because our casualties were particularly large, but because they were on top of 20 years of war. <clears throat> we were defeated militarily in achieving our full goals in Afghanistan, not by the Taliban, <clears throat> but by the phrase forever war. Once that phrase was coined, the American people demanded we withdraw. Now, I know there's pressure on the chairman to politicize this committee and achieve the political objectives of his party. But this hearing is going to give politicization of uh, a, a bad name because it is the worst issue for the Republicans to bring up. Because, Ambassador, this agreement, this Doha agreement, is the worst agreement I could imagine. I don't blame you. Because President uh, Trump, well, you had testified in your testimony. By the end of 2018, it was well known that President Trump's decision was to bring all American forces home from Afghanistan. In 2019, on the anniversary of 9-11, he invited them to Camp David. And just be <clears throat> before the November 20 ele 2020 election, the pre President Trump stated, we will have the small remaining number of our brave men and women serving in Afghanistan home by Christmas. So the only leverage you had over the Taliban is maybe we will take that foreign policy approach the, 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 and, and keep our Air Force capacity there. And you've got the President saying, President Trump saying, they're all home by Christmas, every single one of them. So this is uh, the worst agreement I could imagine just to, uh, Ambassador, is there anything in the agreement where uh, the Taliban commit themselves to uh, allowing 13 year old girls to go to school? I didn't find anything like that. Do you, is there in there? Uh, the Taliban, uh, there is nothing in the agreement. Uh, the issues dealing with the future of Afghanistan was to be negotiated. To be negotiated, but the agreement the itself, the, the purpose of this hearing sides. is to say, why didn't we enforce the agreement? Right. But when the Taliban, treats 12-year-old girls like sex slaves, when they kill members of the LGBT community, when they kill anyone who converts from Islam to Christianity, they are not in violation of this agreement that we are having a hearing to saying, why are we enforcing? They're not in violation. You can't enforce. We entered into agreement in which they agreed to do nothing more than talk to the Afghan government. Right. They talked. They decided. They wanted to kill LGBTQ community. They wanted to kill what they call apostates. They wanted to basically enslave uh, half the human race, the female half. So uh, this agreement was so bad that the chairman attacks President Biden for not withdrawing from it. This is an agreement entered into by the man who claims he's the best negotiator in the world, President Trump. Um, I will say that we did achieve one objective, and that is Afghanistan is not uniquely situated to serve as a base for terrorism against America. And uh, in fact, there's been more terrorism coming out of Afghanistan killing Iranians in Iran than killing Americans. Um, there's no such thing as a easy withdrawal. Russia, as the ambassador pointed out, Russia and Britain uh, had very messy withdrawals from Afghanistan and our withdrawal from Vietnam uh, was messy as well. That was particularly true when every English-speaking Afghan I had any acquaintance with was trying to leave the idea that the average grunt uh, in, the, in Afghanistan would stay and fight uh, is absurd. But I do have one more question, and that is the Republicans have said that somehow we should have gone all over Afghanistan and collected our $85 billion worth of weapons, presumably from people who knew that they could keep them for their own self-defense or sell them to the Taliban. Could we have by force, taken back our weapons everywhere in Afghanistan on our way out without casualties? Thank you, uh, sir. Uh, as you know, uh, the weapons that were left behind were weapons 
that we thought was safe to leave behind for the government of Afghanistan. Even Since, if we had realized the government was useless, could we have seized them without casualties? Now I, we are, in, are speculating because the government, uh, uh, we assume, would not uh, uh, it, fall apart. Ambassador, it was more of a rhetorical question. So, if people uh, have weapons they want to hold on to, you can't take them away if you're not willing to incur some casualties. I yield back. Gentlemen, you